Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, We're the Movie Couple. I'm Wendy. I'm Dustin. And this is our review for Argyle. Reclusive author Ellie Conway writes best-selling espionage novel about a secret agent named Argyle, who's on a mission to unravel a global spy syndicate. However, when the plot of her book starts to mirror the covert operations of real spy organization, the line between fiction and reality begins to blur. This is also one of those movies we did not see the trailer or do a trailer reaction for, but I saw the movie poster, I liked the cast members that were in the poster, and I was like, you know what, it's got Matthew Vaughn, Henry Cavill, Sam Rockwell, just sign me up. Sounds great. It sounded like a really fun concept to where there's a writer and one of her books just happens to hit a little too close to home and then everyone wants to get in on the action or a towel. You, it wasn't quite clear when we first went in, but it seemed like one of those, okay, this is going to be a little fun, campy popcorn flick and there's going to be Henry Cavill in there. There's probably going to be some fun spy cliches. So why not? Yeah, I feel like this movie is kind of like a globetrotting espionage thriller, but make a comedy and then supercharge it with all the tropes. Um, Bryce Dallas Howard is in this. She is she is the lead in this. Um, and if you guys listen to the synopsis that we had just now, she is the writer. And basically, the book that she's writing, best-selling novel, um, like you said, the 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 timelines and the events kind of lines up with one of the you know spy syndicates and they're kind of like whoa she knows too much is this <laughs> how does fiction? she know all of this how does she know this so we got to get closer maybe she's a spy maybe so we got to get close to her because what if she's able to predict our next move or or she's working with someone who's a there's all these possibilities right and we're gonna like kind of just cover that part of the like synopsis for the movie because yeah the further we dive into it the more of the spoiler territory we're going to get into we don't want to do that in the review because there's a lot of twists and turns this movie takes you on a wild ride uh, to say that there are a lot of twists and turns is an understatement <laughs> i mean there are so many times where you think it's going one way and then they're like no we're gonna do this now and then there's also a whole bunch of tonal changes Yes. in this movie as well to where it starts off is kind of like a serious they kind of know that the fact that they're being a little silly um i mean even the opening action scene yes. that they have in this is very tongue-in-cheek and we're like okay we know what we're in for but throughout the movie it starts shifting and it starts twisting and it starts changing things to where at one point I think my head almost exploded. <laughs> um, so with that said, you know, they do hit all the espionage tropes, but they kind of amplify it and they make it more comedy. Um, so you are going to get some chase scenes. You're going to get, you know, the beautiful men and women in the world of, uh, of espionage, all the the lies on, on top of another lie on top of another lie to be revealed by another lie and, and all of that. Um, I would say, like, it's it's a lot of fun to watch in the first and second act. Like, the first act, I thought, when they started to kind of set up the scenario, I was like, oh, well, that's really, really interesting because now you have this writer who's finding herself literally in the world of espionage that she writes about and she doesn't she's beside herself she doesn't know what to do with her she's like i just want to be to be like me and my cat i i, I don't don't want, want any romance of, yeah. don't want any action just to be able to sit i have my method <laughs> and then they start revealing certain things and they start twisting certain things she starts solving some of the puzzles and then everything just goes haywire I mean, that normally does kind of happen in action films. So, I mean, in spy espionage movies, mm. but they really do ramp it up to 11. And when they hit act three, that's when they just completely bust the scale. Yeah, they, one would say they jumped the shark. There's two scenes in particular that we will not go into, you know, we, we won't describe because you can experience that for yourself, but... When you see those two scenes, you're going to know what we're talking about. And I love the commitment to those scenes. Like, they fully leaned into it. The people that are acting, all the actors that are in this movie, fully aware. This is a very self-aware movie, and I can appreciate that when a comedy does that. Like, they call themselves out, and I was like, yes. And that kind of makes it more fun to watch for the audience. But these two scenes that they dedicate a lot of screen time to, I feel went on too long the runtime for this movie is two hours and 19 minutes 
Um, and I think they could have had the same effect, the same story, without dragging out those scenes. Like, is it, like, pretty to watch? Yes. But it went on too long. I, I felt like we were watching it for five minutes. I don't know if that's an exaggerate, exaggeration or not, but it went on for an extended amount of time. And because I feel like they took up time with those two scenes, there were other, you know, like, plot lines and stuff that they didn't really, like, fulfill. So they just kind of put a bow on it at the end like well this is just how it happens and I was like well no like where's the connection from this point to this point like had we not spent time on these things we could have had a little explainer that would have taken less time yeah. than those scenes you know to connect it together so I feel like for the movie act one, one started really strong act two was a little bit exposition heavy which given the nature of this film it made sense to for them to put certain beats in that second act and the third one is just like bonkers it's crazy yeah and i feel like when you're in that first act and kind of going into that second act and you're like oh i'm wondering how they're going to reveal this the twists start off as oh okay that's kind of fun but they go from fun and silly to just absurd <laughs> and ridiculous to where it's it was fun but then you're like wait a second really you're you're kind of going with that? Okay, okay. It's a very okay. sudden tonal shift. Yes. And I think if the audience knew or was a little bit more set up at the beginning for this completely wacky evolution of this movie, I think I would have been able to enjoy Act 3 a little bit more. But it just got more and more and more absurd <laughs> to where there was a point to where I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm done. I, I'm going to try to sit down and just enjoy the silliness you have to. of this. But when Wendy you get to was, that point, you have to. Wendy's saying there's two. I think there's actually more th three oh, scenes. Oh, you were more harsh on it than me then. Yeah, to where I'm just like, okay, let's just, let's just wrap this up <laughs> so we can have a nice little ending and I can be like, okay, I had my, my, my giggles. Yeah, yeah. So it's fun. It's a little too long. Some parts felt very unnecessary. Um, I will also say Sam Rockwell absolutely shined in this. He is yes. just, and he's always been fun to watch. And I feel like this type of character, I mean, I think the whole cast really enjoyed being in this film. I just can't imagine the set being filled with like laughter and fun, and tons of blooper reels. Um, but Sam, Sam Rockwell did really, really awesome in this. I felt like it was like a combination of like him in like, I felt like I was seeing like bits of like Charlie's Angel, like when remember when he was in Charlie's Angels, yeah. the, the Demi Moore one, uh, not Demi Moore, the, the Drew Barrymore, Lucy Liu and Cameron Diaz one. Um, like that was like, there was like a little bit of that, like kind of like snuck in there. Just you'll, you'll see what I mean when you watch the film. Um, and also before we go ahead and rate this movie, um, we just want to let you know that you should stay for one mid credit scene. Yes. Yes, one mid credit scene, which may... I, I feel like when we were talking about what it was in the car and that it may connect to something else, but I think it's just more of a nod slash an ode to something else. But you'll you'll understand when you see it. But comment in the comment section once you've seen it, let us know. And there is one other thing that I would like to add is the fact that there were a lot of moments to where it's kind of like a fourth wall break within a fourth wall break within a story part to where you're like, wait, how does that make sense mm -hmm. near the end that I just did not get for some reason. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But I was still, still kind. Of, it was still kind of like, wait, what? And then they moved on, and I'm like, okay, never mind. Roll credits. <laughs> Roll credits, and yeah. here we go. With all that being said, Wendy, what would you rate this movie? I, knowing nothing about this going into it, I was actually really enjoying myself because. It, it took a second for me to adjust. Like, oh, I was like, oh, this is this is this type of movie. It's gonna be wacky. It's gonna be funny. It's gonna be over the top. I got it. And like, then I was like, in it for that kind of movie. Just have some like dumb fun, you know, in the theater. Um, however, the third act, as I was watching, I was just like, what am I watching right now? And it and it made me. And because of those scenes that we're talking about, is a bit too extended, uh, in our opinion. That it kind the movie lost steam for me in the end. Like, I think it had a really strong start, but it kind of, the excitement for the movie kind of taper off for me at the end. So I'm going to rate this movie a matinee. For me, 
I thought that the way it started off was fun. As soon as they start revealing some of the twists and some of the reveals and some of the, this is what really happened, I was like, okay. But as more and more and more and more and more got revealed, and the more ridiculous they got, they started to really lose me. So even though the beginning is fun, you can have some good popcorn, you have some good laughs, and later on you do laugh at just how <laughs> over the top ridiculous in it, I'm gonna say stream it. I also want to note that this is actually inspired by a book called Argyle with the author name being Ellie Conway, who is um, Bryce Dallas Howard's character in the, the, you know, the writer that she plays in the film. However, the book Argyle does not like, it's an, it's like an actual spy thriller. So there's no, there's no, I mean, we haven't read it, but I read the description right before we filmed this because we're like, oh, it's actually a book. Um, so yeah, it's an actual spy espionage. There's no comedy in it. There's no like, oh, and, and then like the, 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 the spy people came after the writer because what she wrote to hit too close to home. It wasn't like that. So I just wanted to point that out if anybody read the book let us know in the comment section below thank you so much for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one